packaging agricultural produce for export to meet international standards requires infrastructure and political will of government. Many African countries depend on agriculture for the bulk of their revenue, as it was the case with Nigeria in the 50s and early 60s. Countries in East Africa that have established perishable cargo terminals such as Kenya, Ethiopia, Cameroon, Tanzania and Uganda rake in hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue annually through perishable agri-exports. Kenya, Ethiopia for instance, even Cameroon, even Benin Republic made four million dollars. And Benin Republic is probably the size, less than the size of your state and we have more landmass, so why can't we do so? We have to provide infrastructure, we have to create a enabling environment by ensuring that perishable cargo exists. Small countries like Republic of Benin, uh, Ethiopia, are shipping fresh produce to Europe on a nightly basis, either fruits or vegetables or flowers. And we have all of those in Nigeria. We've never really used that opportunity. So what, what we're saying is that we're taking, we're designating airports in the catchment areas where these, where these foods are grown. It's a well thought idea because one is going to improve the life of rural Nigerians. The rural farmers, they will harvest their crop. They're not going to have fear about where they store it because the perishable terminal will take care of the storage and the lifespan. They will, it will be fresh until it's exported. So they are going to earn dollars while they are in Nigeria. So a lot of lives will be improved. In Asia, countries such as India and China make as much as $1 billion revenue for exporting pepper and other spices. In Nigeria today, the administration of President Goodluck Jonathan has begun to stimulate this economic revolution and accelerate rural transformation using the aviation sector as the vehicle. Between China and India, they did 1.5 billion worth of pepper last year. You plant pepper in your villages, we plant pepper in our villages, so we, we do have those seedlings now and we can start with what we currently have where you have cargo terminals it simply means that the perishables that you don't have the capacity to preserve can be evacuated as quickly as possible so if we have cargo terminals and uh, you have cargo planes taking to fresh tomatoes out of this country every morning from Makodi, the result of that is that farmers will now produce more because the more you produce the more people are buying off you the establishment of perishable cargo terminals across the country will make nigeria a major exporter of agricultural produce and create a value chain in many rural communities and urban centers in nigeria if you look at smaller countries like uh, somalia for instance they are making a whole lot of money from producing only flowers and they just joined this uh, exportation of their flowers just a few years ago. So for, for Nigeria that is already a food basket, it's going to have a lot of um, spin-off effect which will give us opportunity to give um, employment to our youths. From the continent of Africa, there's a lot of export going out to Europe and other parts of the world, worth about 1.6 billion US dollars. Nigeria contributes nothing to that. Other countries, Kenya, Ethiopia, even the Republic next door to us, Ghana, all these countries have a very large share of this market. Nigeria's share of the market is zero. If anybody decides to close his eyes and say, God, give me a revelation, what is this going to be? They will see in the far horizon of this thick cloud the lining of a bright sunshine for the farmers, for their products, for the chain, for the cargo terminals, for the exports, for the market in Europe, America, and what have you.
That's my message for the farmers. It is a known fact that many parts of Africa rely heavily on food aid and import. Therefore, there is an abundant market for Nigeria's agro products even within Africa. More vegetables and fruits get destroyed in Nigeria than eaten because they have a very short lifespan. If, if you don't move them to a market where they are needed quickly enough, if you go to your village, you see so many fruits on the floor that are the oranges and all that that have not been uh, uh, utilized and therefore they've gone to waste. So bringing these perishable cargo facilities is about evacuating these foodstuffs to where they are needed. Uh, and the example comes from the rest of Africa. Today you can see that Nigeria, so many people in Nigeria that have, they have, they have their vites run away from agriculture. Why? Because there's no market. So if the aviation, if they can do that for us, the agriculture will move. And so many people in this country, they will be encouraged to go into agri. Then not only that, then there will be surplus food in this country. Then unemployment will reduce in this country. The commitment of the Good Luck Jonathan administration to building perishable cargo terminals in Nigeria has positive multiplier effects on job creation, food security, improvement of the country's gross domestic product, poverty alleviation, and rural transformation. Farm, by its definition, is labor intensive. So you take in work farm hands because you have ready-made market. So it will now lead to people to begin the business of agriculture rather than see it as a vocation or something that you do for subsistence. So you begin to have agricultural entrepreneurs, those who want to make money out of farming, as it were, rather than farming for pleasure or for vocation. Frankly speaking, the president is on course. He's been able to contain all those distractions. And now, as you can see, uh, is on the move and the way Nigerians are following. Look at your community. It means you can plant banana with, with less than 20,000 uh, and naira and have the revenue in dollars. That is huge. It means that migration, rural urban migration will stop. What are we talking? You have transformed the, 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 the rural community. Nobody will want to come to the city to bother you because they may actually be making more money in, in, in the village than, than you are. This jobs generating project will involve the building of massive airport terminals which will have several perishables warehouses, a robust freight network and other cargo infrastructure. So what we are seeing today is an example of democracy at work. So I'd like to commend the Honorable Minister, the Minister for Aviation, for this transformation that's taking place in the aviation sector. Nigeria is a blessed country. We have all it takes, men and material, to transform our country. And it takes only the will of those who are opportune to be in governance, to be change agents, and they bring about necessary infrastructure development which our country has been yearning for. And I'm happy to be associated with this. And I would like to tell the Honourable Minister that I will continue to support her in her determination to change the face of our nation in our country. It's an ambitious project, and I've actually heard, the, heard about this project before, uh, both from the various ministries, and uh, I, I think it's an excellent project. I, I believe your president has a, a 2020 vision here, and that's to become uh, less dependent on oil and start looking at um, businesses that will actually produce jobs. And uh, this one where uh, growing up perishables, especially for the European market, is a great idea. Uh, we are working towards meeting up uh, international standards as far as cargo services is concerned. This is a competitive uh, market and we cannot afford to produce uh, something substandard you know, to the uh, international community.
The vision of the administration is to provide a suitable environment for productive activities to flourish in every square meter of Nigeria, informed the choice of the location of the terminals. In terms of the designation of some of these uh, airports for cargo operational goods, we are 100% that right because these uh, uh, decisions that have already been taken, taken um, that have been taken to the Federal Executive Council and are really approved. So they, they are there for the taking. The location is, is about choose any site it will work. If you put, for example, in Yola, the cargo airport they are going to put there, you can never, you will never imagine what effect that will have in that sector. Maybe you think, those that are in Yola can produce things until you try. Because the whole of that sector, there is nothing huge as will be bigger, as big as a cargo terminal. We are going to have one in uh, Joss, we are having in Makodi, we are having in Ilori, we are also having in Kano and uh, Jigawa. Because it's going to be need driven, they will keep on coming up, they will keep on coming up. And, and because the produce market is organic and inorganic driven, and we have all those. It depends on how we want to drive it. I'm particularly excited. The Ministry of Aviation and its agencies is working to ensure smooth and effective operation of the perishable cargo terminals to steer the nation from being over-dependent on oil and gas to a multi-sectoral economy that can provide more job opportunities. Perishable cargo for us benefits all Nigerians and not just that, perishable cargo will create huge value system in my view is going to serve as one of the the largest platform to transform our rural communities the transportation chain the logistics chain the processing chain the commercial chain the packaging i mean is i can go on and on and on and on the chain for the cargo terminals to be so enormous. It is a multiplier effect in commercial value. We will suddenly find out why big countries in the world are not necessarily oil based. It's huge. Nigerians are already welcoming the idea as the building of perishable cargo airport terminals will ensure high turnover and output by farmers in a few years. It's very interesting, it's very good. I think they should be in a hurry to do it so that our agricultural produce do not waste. And most of these agricultural products are industrial raw materials. So if they are properly stored and uh, kept very well, they could not only serve as food, they could also serve as uh, industrial raw materials. It will generate a lot of income for us. As far as the perishables are well stored and preserved, and they remain fresh when they arrive at their destination. They are helping the masses, and more especially farmers, they will enjoy it. Because when they establish this thing, somebody to farm and pack the goods from here to Lagos or from here to Patakot, the days that they will spend at the road, it will make them, all their goods, it will be spoiled. And if they will do this, they will really help the farmer, and they are encouraging the farmer to farm more, so that they will encourage them, if they farm more, even though we, the masses, we enjoy it, but the government, they will enjoy it. The policy thrust of President Goodluck Jonathan's administration is anchored on the transformation of all sectors of the Nigerian economy and governance processes. Watch the Transformation Agenda, a new and insightful television series on the issues, policies, President has done his work. and actions of the federal government. Our aerotropolis is very elaborate, has huge business potentials and opportunities and enablers. Now, you can keep tabs with the President's promise because you have the right to know. The Transformation Agenda, showing on NTA every Saturday at 6 p.m. The Transformation Agenda, keeping the record straight 
and promoting accountability. The Transformation Agenda is brought to you by Neighbor to Neighbor. The opportunities in cargo business are limitless. As cargo traffic figure for year 2011 at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport stands at about 171.6 million metric tons. However, aviation authorities are already targeting about 250 million metric tons by year 2015. We believe that going by our projections, when it effectively, effectively takes off, we can grow our perishable cargo from about a 10, 10 million kilo annually to about um, less about 20 25 you know, uh, million uh, kilograms of uh, perishable cargo in the next 10 years. And what that means is that it will bring close to about a um, gross revenue of almost a billion. If a country like Kenya is making 144 million, uh, for, sorry, 144 billion, Nigeria will have the population, we have the people to farm, we have the land mass. So it's like we have everything to do it. So once we engage in perishable cargo, we are looking at bringing about 200 billion naira into Nigeria, into, into, into rural areas. For now, prefabrication of structural components of the perishable cargo terminals is at advanced stages. And by the time these structures are brought to site and laid down, Nigeria will become a major player in cargo business. The contract have already been uh, awarded and um, the contractors are ready, most of them are almost uh, taking over their sites. So definitely by the six months from now, we are going to see the result of that. It's ongoing as we speak. Uh, these are modular uh, structures. They are, they are being, they're being uh, assembled outside the country. They'll be shipped in and then put together. So it's not, you are not going to see massive construction sites. We'll lay a foundation. They will, then the components will come in and get you know, put together. And uh, uh, my understanding is that this is going to take a few months to do. A perishable cargo terminal automatically stimulates an industrial supply chain, such as air cargo forwarders, ground services, brokers, and distribution centers. The impact is going to be immense in terms of employment, in terms of entrepreneurship, because it's not just the farming, but it's also the, the, the transportation of the, of the produce from the farm to the, to the airport terminal. It's the packaging, so you have specialists in, in transportation, you have in packaging, and then in shipping it abroad uh, by air. So it's, it's going to open up huge employment opportunities for Nigerians in areas where hitherto uh, people have been looking for means of gainful means of employment and have not found. It's going to create more employment and um, it's a very good development to the economy of the country. Um, I think it's a very welcome idea. So it's a very brilliant one. This one we see when we travel out and uh, I'm happy to be part of this development. But this is one minister, one ministry that's doing everything possible to make sure that what we are provided to them, that they do use it efficiently. And all of us have come here today and we, are, we have seen it and we are happy. In the spirit of the transformation agenda and in line with the um, vision for aviation to play a pivotal role, the Honorable Minister Princess Stella Odoa initiated this idea. So at the moment, we have six designated uh, perishable cargo terminals in different parts of the country and that is the process we are driving. The new perishable cargo business that is in its final phase of execution in Nigeria will ensure the country takes advantage of the African and European destinations that have high demands for rare and unique Nigerian agricultural products. What we have is marketable. Our tomato is the sweetest tomato in the world and, and we can export that. Our fish is one of the sweetest fish. This cargo you are talking, if the government tries to do that, we are happy. 
this thing we are selling onions. Onions, what would they say? Two five, one five. They just the price are anyhow. They they say eight hundred, six hundred on the top. If they try to do that cargo now, we get enough money. This uh cargo terminal, the way government want to make a quick draw because it will help us. Our market is not going to spoil. We're going to sell out quick. We're going to get another girl inside. We're not going to lose. The ownership model of the perishable cargo business will be public-private venture, as this will give room for private investment and participation. Also, it will leave space for government to generate substantial revenue. The first three years of perishable cargo operations takeoff will see a management team put in place to monitor and ensure the business is run effectively and in line with relevant industry, government and international regulations. When we make it attractive, private people will come. But we are leading, the, we are calling the show. That's what transformation means. You know transformation what it means? Renewal of your mind. So we are leading and private people have to follow. That's the kind of PPP we're looking at. We're clear that these things are always better left in private hands. Um, but to even structure one deal takes a while to do. So we're providing the infrastructure straight away. That's what the government is doing and we're, we're, we're way into doing that. As we're doing that, we're, we're discussing, constantly discussing what is the best model for running it going forward. In most instances, I see us having private uh, concerns running this, this infrastructure and then de thereafter the next stage and the next level will be private investment. As part of efforts to facilitate adequate understanding of the operations of perishable cargo among the citizenry, the aviation authorities plan to create a user-friendly web page which will contain information surrounding the products and services offered, information on how to manage cargo, and a hint of a wide range of distribution capacity network, etc. It's not just infrastructural change, it's total institutional reform that had to take into consideration the policies, the procedure, and, and all the administrative means. Any system that doesn't run on auto is not a system. So it is a total, it's a very holistic institutional reform. The passion and momentum of the aviation ministry in building the perishable cargo terminals can only surprise cynics or Nigerians who may not have noticed the transformation going on in the sector. It is our hope that there will be a sustenance program, that the efforts and the achievements we've made so far will be sustained. It is also our hope the government will continue to encourage the Ministry of Aviation in their determination to make the sector formidable and compliant to expectations of the outside world. Reacting to antagonists and critics is the least of our business. Tell the story, promote it, Nigerians will respond, praying for us, supporting us. And when the thing comes on board, people will cover their faces in disbelief. Close watchers of activities at Nigerian airports today clearly see the dawn of a new era in the management of government business in the country, all of which is facilitated by President Goodluck Jonathan's unwavering resolve to ensure things work right in Nigeria again. I am very confident that in another year, when all these initiatives come fully on stream, that Nigerians will look back and say, Wow, how did they do it? This is all about a platform for rural transformation. That's what President Goodluck is all about because he believes that transformation has to be holistic. It has to go down to, to, to our rural communities. And this is the platform. I want a Nigeria that people, when you wake up, you should not begin to think about what you will eat. Do not begin to think about the school your children should go. Do not begin to think about power.